And after an alarming increase of Ghana's HIV AIDS population from 150,000 in 2014 to over 334,000 in 2019, the AIDS Commission has revealed that 170,000 adults with the virus are not on treatment. What this means is that more than 50% of the number of people living with HIV in the country are not on antiretroviral drugs. Acting Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Treme Ifchiahene, is warning this could lead to a possible epidemic if active social mobilization and community participation are not enhanced. There's more in this report. This year's commemoration of the World AIDS Day got stakeholders in the fight against HIV and AIDS in Ghana reflect on Ghana's slow progress to ending the AIDS pandemic. Even though prevalence rates have reduced by 22 percent as at 2018, the acting director general of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Treme Etuahine, projects the country will miss out on the 90-90-90 target by 2020 as 170,000 adults with HIV are not on treatment. Despite the progress we have made, the decline in new infection is not significant enough to bend the epidemic curve, especially as annual, an, annual AIDS deaths remain too high. By such significant proportion of the HIV population in Ghana is hugely impacting our efforts at achieving the 1990 target negatively. As as a result, Ghana is one of the countries that are unlikely to achieve the 1990 target by the end of 2020. Supervising Minister over the board of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Tisila Abinadapa, highlighted various interventions to help deal with the prevalence rates in the country. HIV-related stigma and discrimination have gained a widespread notoriety of being counterproductive to the fight against HIV and AIDS. We have wives discriminating against husbands, husbands discriminating against wives, parents and guardians against wards and children, colleagues against colleagues. We have the same situation in our churches, mosques, in our sociocultural setup. In fact, we even have landlords who discriminate against tenants. We have them existing in our hospitals and clinics. We tend to push all these people into hiding. And I'm um, sorry to say that at times it drives them to suicide. It is for this reason that the GAC Act 2016, Act 938, devotes a significant attention to the promotion of the human rights of people living with HIV. U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, also called for free access to the treatment and diagnosis of HIV in Ghana. She says the U.S. government, who through its PEPFAR program in 2020, introduced new funding for treatment of sexual workers and the lesbian gay community exposed to HIV. Starting in 2020, PEPFAR is dedicating additional resources to countries in West Africa, including Ghana, to focus on expanding access to services for key populations, such as female sex workers and men who have sex with men. These key populations live with us in our communities, are disproportionately affected by the HIV epidemic, and must be reached for testing and treatment in order to achieve epidemic control. This year's celebration is themed Communities Make the Difference, Help and AIDS. Now, these figures may sound too vague and may seem far away from you, but it's more alarming when you know the numbers in your community or region. My colleague Malik Dabo has been speaking to the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Treme Ifchiahine. The prevalence is still about the same as we used to have over the last uh, four or five years, and it's around 1.7 percent. Um, but when you look at the new infections, in 2018, 19,931 people got infected in that year alone. Uh, the previous year was a little more than 20,000. Uh, and over the last eight years, we are seeing a decline 
in new infections uh, of about 22%. 20, now, it is, in my view, uh, still a problem to have high uh, numbers of new infections because we have a low, Ghana is a low prevalent country and therefore we should not be seeing this um, large numbers of new infections. Um, they are occurring because of just one fact. Uh, let me put it that way. That majority of people who live with HIV who should be on antiretroviral treatment are not. And that is what is causing the problem. And in fact, most of them don't even know they have HIV because they've never tested. And that's about 150,000 of people living with HIV don't know they have it. And that, for me, is an eye-popping figure. The total population is 334,713. Yes. And out of that, how many are on ARVs and how many are not? As at the end of uh, September 2019, we have 300 and, sorry, 136,000 people on antiretroviral treatment. That's less than half. Yes, that's less than half. And that, that means about 200,000 people who live with HIV are not on treatment. Why? Um, a few, number one is what I said. 150 of these 200,000 don't even know they have HIV. And that is the mo most worrying part. But the, what is more intriguing is the fact that f more than 50,000 of those who, know, who, who live with HIV know they have HIV because they have been diagnosed, and yet they are not taking the medicines. And, and the reason why is that some of them are in denial. They think that, oh, they've not been involved in any risky behavior that should expose them to HIV infection, and therefore, they, they, they don't think they have it. But the, the simple fact that they need to know is that we, before a person is informed of his HIV zero positive status, that person would have gone through a series of tests, at least two rapid tests. One, to just see whether the person, the, the blood is reactive. And if it is reactive, we confirm by a second test. Now we are adding a third test so that we will confirm twice. And so before we tell you, at least we have tested you twice and we have the confirmation that you have it. So wherever you go, you will be told the same results because that your positive status will not change. You, you mentioned another statistic which I'm curious about. The 150,000 you see are not aware that they live with the virus. How does the commission know and they don't know? The commission knows based on the, uh, the studies that have been done. If you read the uh, demographic and health survey of 2014, it tells us clearly that more than 48% of Ghanaian men and I think 33% of women have HIV but don't know, uh, have never tested. And so we, we use demographic and health survey data and other data sets to do the national estimates. And we gave, we, it, we, it gives us precise uh, data or figures on all these indicators that I'm talking about. So if it's health centers that determine or are the sources of this data, do they not have an obligation to inform the people that, look, you have a carrier, you, you are a carrier of the virus? Do they not have that obligation? Yes, they do. And they do inform them. Once a person is tested, they inform them ab uh, of the results. And so if the person is negative, they will inform uh, him and, and, and give him uh, materials and information to enable the person remain you know, negative. What we say is that 
uh, know your status and keep your status. Last year when you spoke, you talked about the commission being concerned about infections involving young people. Yeah. Has anything changed? Yeah, the, what I said last year was uh, specifically on the 2018 data. Nothing has changed. What it means is that of the 19,931 um, 19, newly infected people in 2018, uh, 5,500 can, can I use your... Oh, sorry. So in 2018, as I said earlier on, 19,931 people got infected with HIV in this country in that, in that year alone. And of that number, 5,532 uh, people were young people uh, aged 15 to 24. Now, the male-female breakdown for, for this age group, 15 to 24, is um, 1,175 for males, and that, is, that represents 22%, and 4,382 uh, being females, uh, representing 70, roughly 79%. And so at 78.9 percent and that that is quite worrying worrying why because it is obvious that this large number of young females are getting infected and it is obvious they are getting it from you know uh older men older men uh and 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 that is what makes it worrying because what it means is that intergenerational sex is actually a major factor for HIV infections and and young girls have to take that into account yeah of course they may get all the fancy things from these older men but in addition to HIV and they should watch out have we done any campaign which is tailored towards informing young, particularly young females, about the dangers that this resource prove? Yes, we, we have done that. Um, currently, we are working with the Ghana Most Beautiful uh, for 2018. Um, her main task is to move from Camp tertiary uh, campuses of tertiary institutions uh, to speak to them. And she is doing a fantastic job. Early next year, we are going to launch what we call prevention campaign. And that campaign is going to focus on primary prevention. Uh, and we, we will have a particular focus within that campaign uh, on young people, especially adolescent girls and young women. And so we, we think that if we are, we are able to reduce new infections within this age group, especially girls, then we are in a better position to ensure HIV-free generation. Which is another curious statistics, because out of the 334,713 total population of persons living with HIV in the country, yeah. I Less than half of that, in fact, a third of that is male. Yeah. About two thirds yeah. is female. That yeah. is 217,514 yeah. is female. Yeah. The figures are so sharp yeah. in terms of the male female divide yeah. that one wonders why. Why are women highly, why are women more infected? Yeah. And the figures you gave from the last year infection rate alone bears that out. A yeah. hundred thousand more women are infected with HIV AIDS than men. Yeah. Why? Uh, 
primarily is because of their biological makeup. Um, and I need to emphasize that HIV uh, transmission in Ghana is, is largely through sexual contact. It's about 80% or more through sexual contact. Um, and so you expect that most of the people who get infected are actually uh, got infected through co sexual contact. Very, very informative conversation there that my colleague Malik Dabo had with Treme Etiahin.